Did you receive or expect to receive a Form 1099-R in the mail? Well, if so, you might have more than a few questions about it. And here to talk with us about it is Dana Ansbach from Sensible Money. Dana, welcome. Thanks, Bob. So what is it that people need to know about Form 1099-R, especially uh, as it pertains to last year? Great question. So a 1099-R is the form that you get from your brokerage firm or custodian for distributions that come from retirement accounts. So if you took a withdrawal from an IRA or a 401k, uh, even pensions issue 1099-Rs. And so what you have to be aware of is all of the income or distribution amount that's reported on that 1099 might not be taxable. So those are some of the biggest mistakes that I've seen is someone just reports the full amount reported on their 1099-R as an IRA taxable distribution when a portion of it was not going to be taxable. And particularly this year, because of some of the things with, that came up with the CARES Act, that's something people really need to watch out for. Mm. So in some cases with, uh, I mean, you mentioned some of the big mistakes. Are, are there other mistakes that people need to think about before we dive into the CARES Act, which is a, a subject unto itself? Yeah, well, the, the four biggest mistakes I've seen are one, someone that was newly retired and didn't even report their IRA distributions on their tax return. They got the 1099-R, but they'd never gotten one before and, and they did their own tax returns. And we do tax reviews. And so when we reviewed their tax return, we were able to catch it and they filed an amendment. Um, that was a pretty big mistake. I have seen mistakes where there's something called a qualified charitable distribution you can take from your IRA where you make the distribution to your charity. It's not reported as part of your adjusted gross income, but on the 1099-R, your custodian will report the full amount, and it is up to you to then keep track of the portion that is not taxable. So that's a mistake I see when people forget, and they still pay taxes on the full amount of the distribution. I also see mistakes where people do rollovers, so from a 401k or a 403b to an IRA, and again, maybe they're 401k provider reports the full amount of the rollover. And so the tax preparer reports it all as if it was taxable income, but really none of it was taxable because it all went to the, the IRA account. And then I often see people who didn't keep track of their cost basis for non-deductible IRA contributions. So I had a client who made non-deductible IRA contributions for well over a decade for he and his wife never kept track. Um, there is a special tax form 8606 that is used. And so when he went to take IRA withdrawals and start to do Roth conversions, he was like, well, I don't have this. I'm just not going to worry about it. Well, it was over $200,000 of non-deductible contributions they've made over their lifetime. And I said, no, you have to track this down. That is an extra $200,000 that you will pay double tax on if you mm -hmm. don't figure out a way to to track down the basis. And so those are those are some of the mistakes I have personally witnessed in my career. Those are some uh, big mistakes uh, for people and I'm glad that we mentioned them. The CARES Act uh, created some special circumstances last year. Uh, it obviously waived RMDs for 2019. Some people did get um, a distribution for which they'll receive a 1099-R. They will. So some people took their required minimum distributions earlier in the year and then found out that it could be waived or they decided that they wanted to put it back. You had until August 31st to put it back if you had already taken it. But your custodian, again, is going to report that distribution. So it, it, let's say you took $20,000 and you put it all back. And so at the end of the year, you're going to get a 1099-R that states a $20,000 IRA withdrawal. So it's up to you, again, when you report that there's a, a line, I think it's item 4A and 4B on a 1040 tax return where you report your taxable and then the, you know, the full amount of the distribution and then just the taxable portion. Well, in that case, none of it would be taxable. Now, you will get in the spring a Form 5498 that will show that that money was put back, but those forms don't come out until May. And so it's up to you to save your IRA statement, for example, showing that you put the money back in to keep that as your, as your form of record keeping in the meantime, and to make sure that you report it correctly on your tax return so that you don't pay tax on it because it wasn't supposed to be taxed. Right. And for folks who missed the August um, 30th deadline, they obviously will get a 1099-R and will have to report it. They will. Yes. 
Yes, if they wanted to put their RMD back. Now, there was a different form of the CARES Act where you could take a hundred thousand up to a hundred thousand dollars and as kind of a special distribution, and you could spread the taxation of that over three years. So on the IRS website, it gives the example that if you took a $9,000, what they call a coronavirus-related distribution, you could report it on your tax return $3,000 a year over the next three years. Or if it was more advantageous, you could report it all in a single year. So there's the option to, to say, you know, if you took a distribution that if you could qualify it as one of those, you might be able to spread the tax consequences out over three years. Mm. This might be a, a video f- interview for another time, but obviously if you took a coronavirus uh, related distribution and put it back and paid the taxes on it, you'd have to somehow square that up later on. You would. Yes. <laughs> we'll save that discussion for another time. Um, a- anything else that we haven't touched on that you think we ought to before we wrap up? I think if you're not sure what you're doing, it always pays to use a tax professional. I always think that's a good idea. But even if you're using a tax professional, you have to interpret those 1099 R's. So just like you're going to see this full amount of the distribution in the box, that's what they're going to see. So you are still going to have to be the responsible party and let them know, look, this portion was a qualified charitable distribution, or this portion was put back because uh, it was an RMD and I realized I didn't have to take it, or this portion, uh, I want to see if I'm eligible to qualify it as a coronavirus related distribution. So you still have to um, partake in the tax planning and, and all of those decisions, even if you are using a professional. Mm. So every answer that you give begets another question on my part, you'll forgive me. Um, Obviously, uh, with 1099 R's, in some cases, uh, federal and state taxes are being withheld from the amount that's being distributed. Uh, What do folks need to know about that, if anything? Well, it's kind of like withholding when you're working. So it all evens out when you file your tax return. So if you had taxes withheld, but it turns out um, a portion of it's not taxable, it all comes out in the wash. You, you may then get a refund that you weren't expecting. And if you didn't withhold enough, then you may end up owing. So the money's not lost if you overpaid. You will get it back when you file your tax return. All right. Dana, as always, it's a great pleasure chatting with you about uh, these topics and, and sharing your wisdom and knowledge with our viewers. It's always fun.